Hello, everyone, and welcome to Visual Radio. Today is, I know it's July, it's July 21st, because I saw Captain America last night, July 20th, screening in Boston. My guest today is Justin Martin, who has a new book, Genius of Place, The Life of Frederick Law Olmsted. Did I get that right? You got it right. Dead on. Now, my, my first question to you, Justin, is Frederick Law Olmsted, an American journalist, critic, public administrator, is a bit different from your previous topics, Ralph Nader, Alan Greenspan. Maybe not too far off, but a, a little different from these fellows. Why? Well, I guess, um, I guess part of it is he's, I, I chose to do a dead figure this time around as opposed to a living figure. So in that, in that case, you know, it was a very different project. Um, you're just sort of poking around in dusty archives as opposed to trying to chase a living figure and pin him down for an interview and so forth. Other ways, though, they actually, they're, they're more closely connected than you might think because um, I, I like writing books about people who are late bloomers. And, and all three of those figures, um, Greenspan was somebody who's a professional jazz musician, member of Ayn Rand's inner circle before he found his way to economics and the Fed. And um, Nader, you know, was a, a writer. He wrote Unsafe at Any Speed about auto safety and a consumer advocate. And then, of course, became a many times presidential um, um, flying the ointment. Olmsted falls into the same category. He's actually connected to those figures from the standpoint he was somebody who did a lot of different things before he did the thing that he's known best for. And when did he come into his own? What year in his life? I guess you could say he first started. He, he first started to come into his own when he became a journalist in the 1850s, when he was reporting for the brand new New York Times. That was a really serious job. He was traveling down to the South, um, writing about the institution of slavery. So that was when he was beginning to come into his own. He came into his own as a landscape architect in 1858, when he started working on Central Park, his first park design and his first masterpiece. He was almost 40. Yeah, that's right. He was. So yep, he was. He was well.